Hey, I'm good day, everybody. This is Sports News. I'm Jeff Borg, and this is going to be a quick recap of the games from last evening as we had a great defensive goaltending battle in the Game 2 of the Battle of Florida, and then Bennington prevailed in Game 2 of the battle between the Avs and the Blues as the Blues were able to have a much better effort. They got a couple helps from knuckle pucks off of the uh, stick blades of the Colorado Avalanche as well on that Cairo goal and on the first goal by uh, David Perron as he was able to knuckle puck through Kemper there, as I think Kemper might want that one back, but that one was a knuckle puck. The one that Darcy Kemper really would want back in that game was the second Perron goal, where he was coming down on the rush and looked like he really should have been able to get that one, where Landis Cog was able to score the lone goal for the Avalanche. He was trying to pass it out in front, and then it ended up banking off of the defender, going back to him, and he was able to pot the goal as Bertuzzo was trying to get back to make the play, but could not. So that was a great overall game from the Blues. Though. you got to give the Blues an A for that game. They played a great overall effort. Jordan Bennington was huge again. Fantastic in game one. As Luke Korak, the great Blues reporter, said Bennington's numbers are bonkers. 175, 4 and 1, and 948 save percentage. He stopped 163 of 172 shots in this freaking postseason. He might be the goaltender of the postseason since taking over for Billy Huso, and that's saying something with the way that this postseason has been goaltended. Antti Ranch has also been a goaltender of the postseason, and he's been playing exceptionally well himself, and will be back in cage tonight against the Rangers. So, obviously, you have competition for that, and before last game, Markstrom was a very good goaltender in this postseason, and even in a losing effort, Adi Ottinger was a goaltender of the postseason as well, but Bennington's been spectacular in this postseason, and it was fantastic to see that. Um, continue last game, but the, the difference is the Blues were actually able to get the goal output and be able to solve Kemper due to the help of some uh, knuckle pucks due to hitting off of the blades by the Avalanche, but you take what you can get, right? Jordan Kyber has been fantastic, continued the great offensive trend. Saad has been great, and he got to get rewarded with the empty net goal, and Perron continues his streak by having two goals himself. And then in the Battle of Florida, uh, this was a game that Corey Perry he continues to step up in the postseason, even at the age of 37. He's still a fantastic postseason performer, and even more importantly, a power play performer, which is why I agree with Paul Biznasty Bizanet that Joe Thornton might have to be put in for the Panthers in the next game in Game 3, kind of as like a desperation move, because he's still good on the power play. Obviously, he's a slow skater now, not the best at everything, but can still be a good face-off guy and good on the power play. You might have to do that desperation move there. But Corey Perry... At 37, still effective on the power play, sets himself up sharply for the nice pass from Steven Stamkos, and then he's able to tip it in. E2 loose to Reinen, that's a goal that you're never going to see Vasilevsky allow again, as E2 loose to Reinen from Forsling and Giroux was able to wire that one literally through Vasilevsky, as somehow that got through him and in cage. And the Panthers, during the intermission break, talked about how that started giving them the momentum in the game. It didn't, uh, unfortunately, was able to prevail in another goal, because Andre Vasilevsky was spectacular in this game and deserves a star of the game. He was great in the closeout period in the third as the Panthers continued to push. And realistically, the Panthers were the much better team after they were able to pot that goal that squeaked through Vasilevsky by Luce Ryan. The problem was, for some reason, with only seconds remaining at 1956 in the third, beautiful for the Lightning as Kucherov's able to center in front for. Um, Ross Colton to score his fifth goal as he's having a whopping postseason. I think leads their team in goals in the postseason. The former Syracuse Crunch having a fantastic postseason for the Lightning. Uh, he shouldn't have been that wide open in front because for some reason, while Forsling was already manning behind the net, Mackenzie Weger also went behind the net, leaving Ross Colton wide open in front. And that's an easy goal. Not on Sergei Bobrovsky whatsoever. He made a couple really key saves prior to that goal and throughout the entirety of this game. Obviously, that glove save was ridiculous by Bob. This was a game that the Panthers were just not able to get enough for their goaltender. It was like the Blues in Game 1 for Jordan Bennington. They couldn't get enough for their goaltender. Bob played fine in this game, made a couple saves where he bailed them out, and then they just left him completely exposed as, for some reason, Uyghur crashed behind the net. But this has been a quick recap of the great action of hockey from um, the 19th that now tonight I'm going to be previewing soon the uh, Carolina Hurricanes versus Rangers and the Battle of Alberta as what is the over under in that probably eight <laughs> but everybody have a great safe and pleasant day please subscribe down below above these huge widget to keep the channel growing to the goal of 250 or more by the start of June.